The Democrats have deployed an army of lawyers to bring down independent candidates. Meanwhile, they're backed by more billionaires than Donald Trump. So how can the Dems and their legacy media amplifiers continue to vilify not only Trump, but anyone that opposes Joe Biden and not just admit that this is already a dictatorship? <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on our voyage to truth and freedom. Remember, click the link in the description to become part of our movement. You get an exclusive video every single week. And if you use the code God is great, you get one month free to decide whether or not you want to be part of this, part of this movement, part of this truth, part of this freedom. Or if you just want to slide into tyranny under neoliberalism and legacy media stewardship, accepting somehow that we must protect democracy because democracy is that thing where you vote for Joe Biden. And not Donald Trump, of course, because he's a monster. Why we amplify the flaws of Donald Trump on an almost daily basis. He did this, he said that, he's in this court case, he committed this offence. Donald Trump is so continually vilified, you have to work hard mentally to try to have your own opinion on that subject. Here's a good control group, though, if you're trying to understand establishment mentality to external or even internal challenges. Look at how they're beginning to talk about Bobby Kennedy now that he's regarded as a real threat and a potential stealer, because they see them as their votes, of Democrat Party votes. Even Cornel West, the Green Party, anybody who poses a threat to the Democratic establishment will now potentially be targeted by the Democrats' army of lawyers and the legacy media attack dogs have already begun to take down anybody who could prevent Joe Biden having his presumed second term. People throughout the independent media space are asking who really runs the White House. You heard Tulsi Gabbard say it can't be Joe Biden, can it? Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama are not in office right now, but they still continue to wield immense power in influencing the decisions that are being made. When Hillary Clinton said herself the other day, she said, oh yeah, I talk to the White House every day. So it's not, it is no shock or surprise uh, who the influences are behind the policies that are coming out of this White House. So today we're looking at the armament of the Democratic Party with lawyers to bring down independent candidates and the tactics that are used to bring down anyone but Biden. And we'll show you exactly why they're scared of Bobby Kennedy, what it is he says that has them so terrified. First of all, we'll look at Jen Psaki, former White House press secretary, now MSNBC talk show host, and note how with constrained hysteria, she attacks Bobby Kennedy, assumes that Bobby Kennedy would be bad for America, assumes that the only plausible possible beneficial outcome is a victory for the Democratic Party, never seeming to reflect for even a moment that this could be misguided. What has democracy become if you have to work this hard to prevent people contemplating and considering anyone other than a candidate who seems to be edging us closer and closer to Armageddon on several fronts? These third party candidates are a huge, huge, huge problem and there's a number of them. Shouldn't be regarded as a problem in a democracy should it? Variety in consumerism is regarded as a good thing. Oh, look at all these different breakfast cereals. In politics, you can have this little old man. That's it. If you look at RFK Jr., it's the name recognition issue, as Tom was just talking about. That's all it is. He's got the name Kennedy. It's not that people are disillusioned, disenchanted, the trust in every single institution is beginning to break down the deep state, the government itself, the legacy media, big pharma, the judiciary, the constant warmongering. It's just that this person happens to be called Kennedy. It's not that Bobby Kennedy wants a full reckoning for the pharmaceutical industry, has called out the corruption and bureaucracy within the health regulation bodies that were supposed to be protecting and helping American people in a massive healthcare crisis over the last few years is not his willingness to talk out against the war machine. I know our audience, so I know a lot of you are very pro-Trump. I know basically all of you hate the establishment. I know loads of you will have questions about Bobby Kennedy, particularly if his running mate is to be someone that has former affiliations with an organisation as large as Google and Alphabet, even if it's only through marriage. But there's no question that to the establishment, Bobby Kennedy is being regarded and literally he described as a threat and know that they are unwilling to talk about what he stands for and what his manifesto is. And there are still states in this country, uh, obviously, I mean, Georgia is one of them, I will name, where the Kennedy name is beloved, right? Where people may just not right. still, where they may just not know a lot about the fact that he is an anti-vaxxer who's a conspiracy theorist. They don't know that yet. <laughs> 
just as simple as that. He's an anti-vaxxer who's a conspiracy theorist. If you spent any time listening to Bobby Kennedy, you will know that he's not an anti-vaxxer. He says, in fact, that vaccines can be very helpful in certain medical situations and that he simply has questions about events over the last few years and he has campaigned for a long time around issues connected to vaccines in childhood. The idea that he can just be, as he was then, dismissed as an anti-vaxxer and as a conspiracy theorist tells you more about the legacy media than it tells you about Bobby Kennedy. They don't want you listening to Bobby Kennedy. They don't want you considering independent candidates. It's clear what they want. They want you just to shut up and vote for Joe Biden. On Morning Joe, they plainly said as much. Just vote for Joe Biden. Shut up. Stop asking questions. Stop thinking. Stop criticizing us. There is an aggressive effort that the campaign has been working with the Democratic National Committee on to run on this, but it needs to be broad. People need to be shouting it from the rooftops because this is the one of the biggest threats um, to Joe Biden being reelected is these third party candidates. If you look at Michigan, Mika, and I know uh, Sen- uh, Alicia, Alyssa Slotkin is going to be on later. I almost called her yeah. senator. Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin is going to be on <laughs> later. Michigan is a state where RFK, I think, is polling at 10 percent. Right. And so this is a place where Joe Biden needs to win. A moment of consternation across the board of pundits there, because, of course, also significant in Michigan is that Biden received 100,000 uncommitted votes. Explicitly, it is said, in protest against the Democrats' stance and Biden's in particular with regard to various wars, in particular Israel's actions in Gaza. And as usual, the focus continues to be this is your only option. This is your only route. Even with Democrat voters turning away from Biden, the only focus is don't let them have an alternative. Don't let them even consider Bobby Kennedy. And the last thing they need in a swing state like Michigan is a candidate like Bobby Kennedy taking away significant votes, leading to a Trump victory. So now the campaign begins in earnest. Not only anti-Trump, anti-anyone else but Biden. And yet it's still somehow a democracy. And RFK Jr. is making a real threat to that. So it's good we're talking about it. It is a real threat. Look at Mike. She's actually shaking her head. Oh, I can't believe this. I can't believe we're actually going to have to have some principles and listen to people and stop arming the world. Oh, this is terrible. So terrible. Why won't they just shut up and do as they're told? They're aware of it, but more needs to be done and more people need to be talking about it and aware. Thank the Lord we can bring you this content because of the support of our sponsors. Support them if you can. Today I want to talk to you about Field of Greens. It's the healthiest thing I do every day. And I want you on this journey with me, side by side. It's literally one scoop a day. It tastes great. My favourite is the original flavour. And it's completely improved my life. This is nutrition, the way that nature intended, in a scoop. Here's what I noticed since I started taking Field of Greens. Way more energy over the course of the day. Sleeping better at night like a baby. As you know, they're truculent and difficult at night time. So I sleep better than one. Healthier hair and skin. It helps with my digestion. My stomach feels better. I feel better overall and I think healthier and stronger. Field of Greens is radically different. Each organic fruit and vegetable was medically chosen to support the heart and vital organ health. I trust Field of Greens to keep me healthy. I promise you're going to love this product, but if any reason you don't, they'll give you 100% money back guarantee. Now listen, I've got you 15% off your first order plus free rush shipping. Visit BrickHouseRussell.com and use promo code BRAND. That's pro Promo code BRAND at BrickHouseRussell.com. They'll know I sent you. Okay, let's get back to the story. As you can see, the establishment is panicking. Here's how they intend to deal with that panic. Not by making their party more amenable to American voters. Not by looking to bring about ceasefires instead of arming the world. Not by improving the lives of ordinary Americans and recognising that half the country at least are hugely dissatisfied. No, what they're doing is arming up with lawyers and ensuring that you've got no option but Biden. An army of lawyers aims to challenge the steadily advancing ballot access efforts of independent candidates who Democrats fear could peel votes away in swing states. The Democratic Party, increasingly alarmed by the potential for third party candidates to swing the election to former President Donald Trump, has put together a new team of lawyers aimed at tracking the threat, especially in key battleground states. The effort comes as challengers, including the independent candidates Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Cornel West, plus groups like No Labels, as well as the Green Party, have ramped up their push to qualify for states' ballots ahead of critical deadlines in the 
the spring and summer. When it comes to Trump, they will always use ideas like, oh, he is a misogynist and he is a racist, he is a criminal. Then when it's Bobby Kennedy, oh, well, he's an anti-vaxxer and he's a conspiracy theorist. With Cornel West, what's it now? Oh, well, we don't like his haircut. What are they saying about the Green Party on no labels? If what the agenda is, is to dismiss anyone but Biden, how long before we acknowledge that what we have is not only a technocracy, the rule of law by an aristocratic class, note the influence ongoing of the Obama and Clinton families on the Democrat Party machinery, what you actually have is a dictatorship. A dictatorship means you vote for this, that's it or you have no options at all. The legal offensive will be aided by a communications team dedicated to countering candidates who Democrats fear could play spoiler to Mr. Biden. It amounts to a kind of legal whack-a-mole, a state-by-state counterinsurgency plan ahead of an election that could hinge on just a few thousand votes in swing states. In the last two weeks, major articles published in the media have spelled out the Democratic Party's plan to block to the extent possible any third party or independent candidates from appearing on the ballot this November. They literally don't want you to have the option to vote because it's a democracy and the reason we can't have Trump is on day one he'll declare himself a dictator and it'll be tyranny. And But look at what they're doing. This is actually not democratic. Not having debates, not acknowledging the 100,000 uncommitted votes in Michigan. This is already, do you not see, a type of banalised dictatorship as opposed to a militaristic, fascistic one. The media reports employ the language of a military offensive referring to the all-out war the party is preparing the army of lawyers. It is mobilising the state-by-state counterinsurgency plan that it is implementing. Interesting language, all-out war, army of lawyers, counterinsurgency plan. Note that when Donald Trump used the phrase bloodbath, there was hysteria, pearl clutching and panic. And now third party candidates are regarded as a threat. The language is militaristic. The legitimization of the military on the subways in New York is being normalized. What it appears that we are preparing for is a state of continual threat, panic and fear where the only people that know what's best for us are these establishment figures. Isn't it possible that you could be saying, well, it'll be good if Cornel West gets some influence and Bobby Kennedy has to somehow be accommodated. Do you know what? Maybe we should be looking at our electoral colleges and ballot systems so that we can have a more representative system of democracy, given that we are so interested in diversity, diversity of opinion, diversity of views. Wow, maybe we could have it so that the electorate are involved in not only the presidential election, but the entire cabinet. Maybe we could review all of our systems. No, they're so certain that the outcome must be Joe Biden, that it must be the ongoing hegemony. A democratic party that represents plainly a billionaire class must continue to ascend unassailed. That's why the language of war is being used, because it is a war. It's a war against, ironically, democracy. In a country of 330 million people, the financial oligarchy demands that ballot access be restricted to their corporate dominated parties. The extreme contempt for basic basic democratic principles is glaring. There are concerns in the Democratic Party that giving people more choices on the ballot is more likely to hurt Mr Biden than New York Times writes, an argument befitting of a dictatorship. The Times quotes Robert Lenhard, an outside lawyer for the Democrats, as stating that the effort to limit ballot access is meant to ensure that the people who are on the ballot have legitimate bases of support, by which he means the backing of the corporate financial oligarchy. When it comes to the campaigning there, the extraordinary language of war, when it comes to the business of elections, bland legalese that masks the fact that what they mean is we only want people on that ballot box that we already own. Now, whatever your own attitude is to Donald Trump, whether you love him or loathe him, isn't it more likely now that we know their ire extends beyond Trump and into essentially anyone who isn't Biden, and Biden is just an avatar of establishment power, that it's not the moral and ethical critiques of Trump that are important, it's the fact that he is not owned in the same way that these candidates are. Indeed, there you have it. They want to remove from the ballot anyone that is not corporately backed, that doesn't have the right basis, the right funding. A Pew Research poll conducted in 2022 found that the disdain for the Democrats and the Republicans is as high as it has been in more than two decades of polling. Under these conditions, the Democrats' lawyer tells the Times, it is necessary to prevent voters from having more choice on the ballot. That is, the ability to vote for candidates they actually support. That seems like an extraordinary game to be involved in. So the way that Jen Psaki dismisses, you know, voters don't know yet that he's a conspiracy theorist. So we're going to tell you he's a conspiracy theorist. Don't even think about voting. In fact, 
backed. If he's not correctly corporately backed, so no wonder he has to have a VP with strong financial ties because otherwise he's going to get nixed, shut down, shut out by an establishment that won't allow those kind of voices. It's clear that the game is rigged and the sort of magnetism, magnitude and gravity of that game pulls everything in a particular direction. It's not broadly understood, including by workers in the United States, how deeply undemocratic the American electoral system actually is. The number of signatures third parties are required to gather in some states is colossal. 219,403 in California, 145,040 in Florida, 113,151 in Texas, 82,452 in North Carolina, 45,000 in New York, 43,000 in Arizona, 36,944 in Indiana, 25,000 in Illinois, at least they rounded it to a normal number, 23,737 in Oregon, and at least 10,000 in Massachusetts, Missouri, Maryland, Michigan, Nevada, South Carolina, and Colorado. Collectively, independent candidates and third parties would have to gather over 900,000 signatures to get on the ballot in every state and Washington, D.C. Doesn't seem like that's there to protect and help you, does it? It seems like that's there to ensure that you've already filtered out anyone who's a potential threat. Like, by the time you're on that ballot, we're fine with you. Furthermore, in order to overcome the Democrats and Republicans' ruthless challenges to the signatures collected, third parties are compelled to gather at least 50% more than the official requirement, or roughly 1.5 million signatures nationally. And in addition to that hard rule, we're making it a bit harder for no reason other than we can. Another 50% more signatures. Hooray, democracy, woo! In contrast, getting on the ballot nationally in Russia, constantly denounced by the American media as the most authoritarian and undemocratic country in the world, requires the gathering of 100,000 signatures. In our country, you know, like sometimes like it will come up, the WHO treaty, if you want it debated before they get the right to impose laws on your country and lockdowns, 100,000 signatures on this petition online, and then we might debate it in parliament. You don't need to thank us. You're welcome for the democracy. Look how they could just continually got their thumb on the scale all the time. Just saw you putting your finger on the scale. No, I didn't. And if you start to find a way to sort of work it in spite of the thumb on the scale, they're just elbow on the scale now. I didn't put my finger in the scale. Despite repeated and expensive court challenges by third parties, state and US Supreme Court decisions have frequently upheld anti-democratic ballot access laws or ruled in such a narrow fashion that legislatures were allowed to rewrite laws to achieve the same effect. Beyond the ballot access laws themselves, the state and the media are set up to maintain the institutional control of the Democrats and Republicans. This has been accompanied by other anti-democratic measures such as the escalating campaign of internet censorship. And I also think that shows you the threat of independent media because suddenly now, relatively cheaply, you can get name recognition, popularity, you can campaign broadly and widely, not going door to door, printing leaflets, all the stuff that would be required to get that enormous number of signatures. They've realised, oh my God, they're going to be able to cheaply gain popularity quick, shut this down, introduce censorship laws, start finding in new terms like hate speech, anti-vaxxers, medical misinformation, do whatever you need to do to shut down anyone who might turn up in our little party where we all get to tell everyone what to do and what not to do. That's plainly what's happening, isn't it? The present effort of the Democrats to thwart third party and independent campaigns marks a vast acceleration of this process. Democrats assert, of course, that their anti-democratic conspiracies are necessary to stop Trump and the Republicans. This is a cynical fraud. The defense of democratic rights is impossible without addressing the root cause of dictatorship, the staggering concentration of wealth in the hands of the capitalist oligarchy. The number of billionaires in the US has risen from 614 to 737 over the past four years, coinciding with the four years of the COVID-19 pandemic. Their combined wealth has nearly doubled, up 88% over that period. So since Biden became president with all of the fanfare and rhetoric around fairness and diversity, the number of billionaires has sharply increased and their accumulative wealth has sharply increased even more. I put my shoulder out of joint trying to tell you how unequal, unfair and how unjust it is. All the while they're telling you, you have to vote for us because otherwise, you know, Trump and that would be a dictatorship. It's already a dictatorship. Don't you see, don't you understand yet that people just prefer someone who is inherently anti-establishment just in their manner rather than continuing to put up with what on some gut level we all know is disgusting.
disgusting corruption. The oligarchic character of American capitalism infects every institution of the state, the courts, and the media, and it dominates the entire 2024 presidential election. Billionaires sustain both of the two capitalist parties competing for their favor in the 2024 presidential election. Trump's support among the billionaires is actually weaker than Biden's, in large part because he's regarded as unreliable on key questions of foreign policy, above all, the US-NATO war against Russia over Ukraine. The Wall Street backing for the presidential ticket of Biden and Kamala Harris is broader, reflecting the transformation of the Democratic Party over the past three decades into the principal party of the stock exchange and major banks. Billionaires and oligarchs and the financial industry want Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in office, not Donald Trump, because Donald Trump might, perhaps will, say, I don't want that war anymore, it's unnecessary, his values might be different, his principles might be different, he's regarded as unreliable. So when you see all these liberals, is the word we're supposed to use to describe them, on MSNBC and CNN and elsewhere, saying, Kamala Harris, or in the talk show hosts late at night, oh, you know, Trump, what a monster. They're doing the work of billionaires and Wall Street and the financial industry, and they're still trying to sort of maintain a kind of, hey, we're against the establishment. We're the voice that's helping people from diverse backgrounds and minorities and poor people. They're not doing that work. They're using that to distract you from the fact, whether they know it or not, from the fact that they are doing the bidding of an oligarchical class that includes Wall Street and more billionaires. Because the billionaires, they're afraid that Donald Trump might just go, we're not doing that war anymore, I don't like it. It's extraordinary, isn't it? The moral compass has been corrupted, it's swinging around all over the place, and the only way we're gonna know what true north is, is by looking at the map of reality ourselves. While the corporate media describes Biden going out on the campaign trail, the reality is quite different. Biden's face-to-face -face contact is almost entirely with big campaign donors and his real focus during the spring and summer will be to gather the financial resources required to mount a massive media barrage in the months leading up to the November the 5th vote. Even though he like presents himself as, you know, corn pops adversary and Irish and ordinary and friends of steel workers, when it comes to the crunch time, and the crunch time is the period leading up to the election, he will be, as he was in the last election, spending his time with Wall Street donors, corporate donors and the establishment, because as we know, that's who they work for. And there's no plans to change that. So Trump will be vilified. Bobby Kennedy will be vilified. Cornel West, if he presents a threat. Marianne Williamson. Forget all these voices. Forget all these people. Forget you. Forget everything except of telling you the only democracy that matters is the democratic right to vote for one person. In many cases, particularly on trips to non-competitive states like California, the Democrats dispense with any pretense of public campaigning and simply address their real constituency in the financial oligarchy. Last week, even in tightly contested Michigan, Biden did not appear in public because of fears of counter-demonstrators protesting the US-backed genocide in Gaza, which I suppose is an indication that it's a party that has no morality, that doesn't really care about anything except for profit and perpetuating a globalist agenda, even if that agenda means tens of thousands of deaths. Indeed, in February, over 100,000 people voted uncommitted in the Michigan Democratic primary to send a message to President Biden over his unconditional support for Israel. 100,000 votes could make a big difference in the November presidential election since Michigan is a swing state. But headed into the full campaign, there are two main components of the Democratic Party strategy, piling up financial resources and suppressing efforts to place third party candidates on the ballot. So what are the Democratic Party really about? Who are they for? Who funds them? And what business are they engaged in right now? It seems that they're engaged in perpetuating war, representing billionaires, ensuring that the media continues to amplify their message and eliminating in competition until all you have is one candidate and the idea that what you're voting for is democracy. Trump, we can't have that guy. Bobby Kennedy, can't have that guy. Anybody else, can't have them. What you have got is the preferred candidate of the financial industry, of the globalists and the billionaires and the legacy media are telling you that what you're doing is somehow fighting corruption, fighting tyranny, fighting fascism. That's how out of touch with reality it's become. Let's look at Bobby Kennedy for just a moment and see how he talks and what he represents to see perhaps why they're so frightened of him. When I was a kid, a typical pediatrician would see one case of diabetes in his entire career, juvenile diabetes. Today, one out of every three kids who walks through his door has either pre-diabetic pre -diabetic or, or diabetic. Something's wrong and nobody's saying, why is this happening? And we know why it's happening. It's high fructose corn syrup. And it's, you know, glyphosate and, and neonicotinoids and atrazine and all the other crap that is in our food. 
We're not feeding people, we're poisoning them. This is a mental health issue, the depression, the anxiety, all of this stuff. The autoimmune diseases that our kids are now ubiquitous in that generate. Kids are not supposed to be sick like that. They're not supposed to be complaining of brain fog. They're not supposed to be on chronic disease, on Adderall and, and albuterol inhalers and, and, you know, insulin and all this other stuff. That, that is not what children are supposed to look like. And, and they don't look like that anywhere else in the world. Only here. We have the highest chronic disease rate on earth and we're being poor mass poisoned by our food <clears throat> during covid we had we had 16 percent of the covid deaths in the united states of america we only have 4.2 percent of the world's population we had the worst record of any country on earth i don't know why people are getting awards for this because whatever they did was wrong the cdc says well the reason it's not our fault it wasn't mismanagement of covid it's because we have the sickest people on earth in this country. The fattest people on earth, the sickest people on earth are here. And they said the average person, this is what CDC says, the average person who died from COVID had 3.8 chronic diseases. So they had diabetes, they had obesity, they had asthma, and they had one other thing, right? No, and no, that's what killed them. It was the chronic disease that took them to the top of the cliff and put them over the side and, uh, you know, and COVID just stepped on their fingers, you know, and dropped them. Isn't it strange that government that's lobbied by big food and receives donations from big food is unwilling to talk about the points that Bobby Kennedy raised there? That COVID caused so much death, not because of even vaccines, doesn't go near that subject, does it? Because it was a sick, unwell population anyway, because of a lack of exercise, poor diet, potentially poor medications, that the people that were dying of COVID, as we all know now, were elderly or sick or had comorbidities. Isn't it odd now that there seems to be a war on Andrew Huberman and Joe Rowe? or anyone that's saying stuff like, why don't you get healthy and fit and stop eating this disgusting processed food that's giving you diabetes and cancer? Why don't the legacy media focus on that? Why are they calling Bobby Kennedy a conspiracy theorist? Well, because who pays their advertising? Big Pharma, Big Food, they're part of the same world and where interests converge, you don't need conspiracy. Who told us that? The great George Carlin. You don't need a formal conspiracy right. when interests converge. These people went to the same universities oh, and please. fraternities, they're on the same very boards simple. of directors, they're in the same country clubs, they have like interests, they yes. don't need to call a meeting, they know what's good for them. So you better believe that Bobby Kennedy's a threat. You're a threat. Anyone that gives you a different outlet other than Joe Biden's a threat. Trump's a threat. You're a threat. I'm a threat. Social media's a threat. Bobby Kennedy is certainly a threat because he's up there not spouting conspiracy theories, but cold hard facts about an America that keeps its population sick and stupid and fat and the last thing it wants is you waking up and becoming a serious opponent of their cozy little two-party system. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments in the chat. Remember, click the link, support our movement. We oppose this crazy stuff. But more important than any of that, if you can, please stay free. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.